early settlers in Bismarck arrived by train. And when you step down off that nice passenger car, you probably stepped into the middle of the leftovers from somebody's horse that had just come by a few hours earlier. And the streets, of course, were dirty, dusty, muddy at times. They didn't drain well. And that was your kind of your welcoming to Bismarck. It was almost a, what have I got myself into here? Bismarck was really one of the wildest and wooliest towns in the nation. You know, they just didn't have the PR of Dodge City and, and a lot of those towns. But uh, we had a, a fourth street right where we are now um, was called Murderer's Gulch or Bloody Fourth. There was a shooting there almost weekly. You heard the stories about uh, how bad Fourth Street was, and I think there's probably they aren't overblown. Fourth Street was tough. Clement Lounsbury, the editor of the Bismarck Tribune, had heard how bad Deadwood was in terms of shooting and gambling, and and he made the trip to Deadwood from Bismarck. And when he came back, he said. It's nothing compared to early day Bismarck. <laughs> Bismarck was far worse. Yeah. I think Bismarck has a very interesting history. There was two parts of Bismarck, the, the Whiskey Point, which was directly across Fort Abraham Lincoln, and then Fourth Street Bismarck. Fourth Street was also very bloody. In 1874, 1875, Bismarck, the city or the town of Bismarck uh, was the most violent place in the American West. And we don't think of Bismarck as having that reputation, uh, but uh, at least once a week, according to Bismarck Tribune and post-surgeon records at Fort Lincoln, um, at least once a week, uh, there was gunfights or knife fights or someone dying somehow violently at least once a week. Frontier justice prevailed. If someone was, was committing a crime, someone with a gun would stop them from committing a crime. That's the way that would be. You know, like I say, it was, it was, it was just a, a colorful time. The middle of the continent was really the last frontier, and Bismarck was dead in the middle of it. It brought some really intelligent people to the area, some people who wanted to progress, people who wanted to set down roots. But it also brought probably the worst in, in society. Your, your gamblers and your thieves and your speculators, they were there. You had people who came out here to start legitimate businesses. Lots of soldiers from the Civil War who no longer were employed, restless, looking for something to do. And that includes those who fought for the North and those who fought for the South. They were all here. And those were the people that had nowhere to go at a time when if you violated a law, they didn't always put you in jail. Sometimes they just kicked you out where you ran on your own. The things that went on here during the 70s and the end of the 80s was uh, unbelievable. It was the end of the line for a lot of folks who had nowhere else to go. And when they got to Bismarck, that was it. That was it. You had to stay here and get along here or die here. That was their choices. I think today, if you talk to any local person here in Bismarck, you'll find they don't know about the, the, the filthy, dirty, gritty past the start of Bismarck. Interestingly enough, on the last train that left that first year out of Bismarck, there were several characters on that train that were ordered to leave town by the leading citizens in the community. And Libby Custer describes that train leaving the passengers were mostly Bismarck citizens whose lawless life as gamblers and murderers had so outraged the few law-abiding residents that they had forced them to depart. We could see these outlaws crowding at the door, hanging out of the windows, swearing and menacing, and finally firing on the retreating crowd as the train passed out of town. Kind of a parting shot, you know, kind of all right, Bismarck, here's what we think of you. And off they go. And so it's, a, it's quite a story. Would have been great to see. 